Hello everyone! Uh, sorry to be uploading this late, but I was waiting uh, for all, all the games from the London Chess Classic uh, to finish, uh, to decide which game to show, and uh, all the games were very interesting, I mean, it's uh, really uh, a strong competition, uh, played in Google headquarters, very nice, uh, but in the end I decided to show you this game, as a lot of you have been asking me to show a game between two engines, and uh, although this is a game, Carlson vs. Caruana, uh, it's uh, it's so correct. It's almost like it's played by two engines. Uh, so let's see this game. Uh, Carlson has the white pieces and he plays d4. Uh, we have d5 and c4, the queen's gambit, and uh, d captures on c4 by Caruana. It's interesting. Uh, Jose Royal Capablanca always said that the best way to refute a gambit is to buy accept it. Uh, but uh, he also said that maybe in the case of the queen's gambit, it's uh, maybe better not to accept it. Uh, but D captures on C4, okay, E3, the old variation, uh, knight to F6, and the bishop captures on C4, E6, knight to F3, uh, C5, uh, we have castles, and bishop, uh, sorry, A6, and bishop to E2. Uh, this is probably, probably a move to, at some point in the future, not allow B5 with tempo, I'm not familiar with bishop to E2. Uh, knight B to D7, uh, knight to C3, uh, b6 now preparing to develop the bishop on this strong diagonal, uh, e4 by Carlsen, and c captures on d4. Uh, knight captures on d4 and the bishop to b7 now. Caruana is now attacking d4 pawn twice, and uh, Carlsen ignores it, he plays the bishop to e3. And it's uh, very interesting what happens if the pawn is captured. Uh, this is actually, this actually favors white. Uh, for example, knight captures on e4, uh, sorry, uh, after bishop to e3, uh, Caruana played bishop to c5, uh, but it's interesting what happens uh, if the e4 pawn is captured. Uh, for example, if knight captures on e4, knight captures on e4, and the bishop captures on e4, uh, you have bishop to f3, now attacking the bishop, and for example, bishop captures, queen captures, uh, now the knight is ready to jump to c6. And after something like bishop to c5, knight to c6, uh, queen to c7, you have rook a to c1, now white is preparing b4, uh, and after something like a5 and a3, uh, rook a to c8, now you play knight captures on a5. Uh, b captures on a5, bishop captures on c5, queen, uh, sorry, knight captures on c5, and b4. Now white is winning back the piece, a captures, a captures, and after black castles, uh, rook captures on c5. Uh, queen to d7 and rook f to c1. Uh, okay, black does have an advantage on the queen side, 4 pawns to 3, but white does have a passed b pawn, uh, this is better for white, and this is only one of the variations that show why white is better. Uh, although, it's, I, I think it's uh, pretty much the best move played by white and black. But okay, after bishop to e3, bishop to c5 by Caruana, and now Carlsen protects uh, the e4 pawn with f3. Uh, castles here, uh, queen to e1, preparing uh, queen to f2, uh, to guard the bishop on e3, and also to add more protection to the knight on d4. Uh, rook to c8, and now queen to f2. b5, uh, rook a to c1, and queen to e7. Uh, a4, Carlsen wants to break open this uh, a6, b5 pawn structure. Uh, b captures on a4, knight captures on b4, uh, attacking the bishop, sorry. Uh, bishop to d6, and we have knight to b3 now. Uh, bishop to c6, attacking d a4 knight, knight to c3, and rook to b8. Caruana places this rook on a very nice open b file, with a tempo on the, on the knight. Also, if the knight moves, this b2 pawn will be hanging. Uh, and knight to a5, uh, now with a tempo on this bishop on c6. Bishop to a8, not allowing knight any free jumps, covering b7 and c6. Uh, knight to c4, now Carlsen attacks the d6 bishop, Carlsen is trying to win that bishop pair, uh, but bishop to c5, uh, rook f to d1, and rook f to c8, and now both players have all of their pieces developed, and uh, are ready, ready to play. Uh, knight to a4, again Carlsen goes for the dark square bishop, bishop captures on e3, queen captures on e3, and queen to b4, uh, now threatening uh, the knight on a4, and also pressuring the b2 pawn. And here Carlsen played uh, queen to a3, and this is this is uh, this is a good move, but uh, 
uh, it seems he missed a better one. Instead of queen to a3 defending the knight, also possible was knight to c3. And it, this does seem better for white as uh, the idea of uh, rook captures knight on c4, uh, giving up the rook for two pieces doesn't work. If rook captures, bishop captures, queen captures, uh, okay, now you want two pieces for the rook, but here comes e5, removing the f6 knight, the defender of the d7 knight. And uh, white is either either winning uh, the f6 knight or the d7 knight. And if something like queen before, uh, e captures an f6, knight captures an f6, uh, you are down a pawn, but you're up the exchange, uh, you know, in, in Carlsen's hands, this is winning. So after queen b4, uh, Carlsen didn't go for the knight c3, he went uh, queen to a3, uh, h6 now, making some breeding uh, room for the king, and also preparing to expand on the queen, uh, king side. Uh, king to f1, uh, g5, uh, we have rook to c3, uh, a5 now, queen captures, a captures, and rook to c1. Uh, king to f8, now both players want to improve the position of their king, uh, knight to a5, king to e7, king to f2 by Carlsen, now rook captures, rook captures, e exchanging a pair of rooks, uh, knight to e8. Now Caruana, as the knight on f6 wasn't really doing anything, didn't really have a bright future there, uh, he's going for knight to d6, and from there he will be controlling a lot of important central squares. Uh, king to e3 further improving the position of the king, and knight to d6. Uh, we have knight to c5, uh, rook to c8, now pinning this knight on c5, and knight uh, a to b3, defending the c5 knight. f5, uh, knight captures on d7, uh, rook captures on c1, knight captures on c1, and king captures on d7. Uh, and uh, we've reached uh, a pretty equal ending, almost an identical ending. Both players have uh, four pawns on the king side, uh, one b pawn on the queen side, and a bishop, a bishop and a knight. So pretty, you know, Carlson does have his king a bit further to the center. So this is this is what makes his position a bit better. Uh, knight to d3 by Carlson, and we have uh, f captures on e4, uh, f captures on e4, and the now king to e7. And this is again uh, a very nice, uh, a very nice idea. Uh, again, Carlsen is offering his e4 pawn, although this time you really can't take it. Uh, knight captures uh, knight captures on e4, falls to bishop to f3, uh, pinning the knight, you're losing the piece. If you move the knight, you lose the bishop on a8. Uh, and, uh, bishop, and bishop captures on uh, e4, of course, loses to knight to c5, forking the king and the bishop. Again, you lose a piece and the game. So after f captures on e4, king to e7 by Caruana, now capturing on e4 is definitely an idea because there is no more knight c5 check. Uh, e5 now by Carlsen, uh, knight to f5 check, king f2, uh, knight to d4, and bishop to d1. Now, this is the famous relationship between a bishop and a knight. Uh, both bishop and knight are controlling the squares the other one can go to. Uh, b3 by Caruana, and uh, now knight to b4. Uh, bishop to d5, uh, protecting the b3 pawn, so now this uh, d4 knight can move. Uh, g3, uh, bishop to c4, uh, king to e3, knight to f5 check, uh, king goes to e4, and king to d7. And this is uh, the greatest moment in the game, this is uh, the moment I really enjoyed in the game, as uh, I didn't really get to get to watch the live coverage by Yasser and Jan Shahadi, uh, but I did catch a glimpse of it, and it was right about at this point uh, where Carlsen played the g4. And I was really surprised. I mean, uh, Caruana has a light square bishop. Why would you push g4 and give him a target? You have a very nice pawn on g3 and h2. Why not keep them there on dark squares? So it was, uh, it was uh, I don't know, it seemed odd. Uh, but uh, if Carlsen did play something like bishop g4 instead of uh, g4, you know, the threaten the knight on f5, uh, this actually doesn't work because of bishop f1. And now if you capture the knight, bishop to g2 check, uh, first uh, getting rid of the king, and after the king moves, uh, then e captures on f5, and now black is fine here. Uh, another idea would be, uh, for example, after this bishop to f1 move, not to capture immediately, uh, but to try and triangulate the position in your favor. Uh, for example, bishop to f3, uh, and now uh, the bishop has to go back to the queen side, bishop to b5, as this uh, pawn, knight and bishop are creating a wall, so the white king can't approach the b3 pawn. Uh, 
uh, but now bishop to h5 and the bishop to f1 again and now bishop to g4 so it's the same position only uh, now it's Caruana's move so sort of triangulating the position into your own favor uh, but now uh, returning to the queen side it doesn't work because bishop captures on f5 so bishop to g2 check would have to be played uh, and after king to d3 bishop to f1 check uh, this is the reason why the whole bishop to g4 idea doesn't work uh, white now has to play king to d2 he has to keep an eye on the e3 square he he can't allow knight to e3 from there knight can jump to c4 to attack the e5 pawn and in the future it can go to uh, f1 to attack the h2 and g3 pawn so uh, unfortunately that doesn't work uh, if you play king c3 then like i said knight e3 uh, with an attack on the bishop bishop h5 and now knight c4 uh, and you lose the e5 pawn so Carlsen saw all of this, and after king d7, he decided to push this g4 move, uh, which I thought, you know, okay, it's weird, but it's Carlsen, you know, he's like, uh, like the the end game machine. Uh, knight to e7, and king to d4. Now the king is now getting uh, closer to the b3 pawn. Uh, bishop to f1, and uh, unfortunately, bishop captures on b3 has to be played again. Uh, Carlsen has to move this bishop from the defense of the g3 pawn. Unfortunately, king c3 doesn't work. Uh, you know, of course, you want your bishop to keep defending the g4 pawn, and you would enjoy capturing the b3 pawn with your king. But knight g6, and now you lose the e5 pawn, and uh, you know, you, 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 you did nothing here. So after bishop f1, bishop captures on b3, but now bishop to e2 by Caruana, as the bishop left the defense of the g4 pawn. Now, Caruana attacks it with his own light square bishop. Uh, h3, of course, bishop f1, now going for the h3 pawn, as the pawns are now on light squares, they're an easy target. Uh, knight to d3, and uh, here we have an interesting position again. Uh, Caruana now doesn't grab the h3 pawn, instead knight to c6 check. Uh, either forcing the king to move away from the defense of the d3 knight, or... Uh, well, if he protects it, then bishop captures, and the knight captures on e5, uh, again, with, with a perfectly fine position for black. But here Carlsen plays king to c5. Uh, he sacrifices a piece in the end game, but it, uh, you'll, see, you'll see what I mean. Uh, bishop captures on d3, and bishop to a4, now pinning the knight on c6. And uh, Corona plays bishop to e4 now, defending the knight on c6, and it seems like... Carlsen can't win the piece back. Caruana is up a piece, but uh, again, <laughs> it's a very interesting position. Uh, king to b6. Uh, Carlsen doesn't allow Caruana's king uh, to move from, from d7, and uh, the king is covering c7, the pawn is covering d6, so the king can't move. If the king moves anywhere else, uh, bishop captures on c6 pretty much wins the game, as this past b, b pawn will, you know, stroll down to victory, stroll up to victory. Uh, so bishop to d5 was played, b4 by Carlsen, and after bishop to e4, uh, the players agreed to a draw, as no player can really make progress here. Uh, b5 doesn't work uh, in any ideas, you just, uh, you know, block your own bishop. Uh, the king can't move anywhere, it loses the game, uh, no pawns can, can be moved forward, so it's a, it's a dead draw. So yeah. Uh, like I said, I, I decided to show this game, it's, uh, it's a very engine-like game, and uh, all of the other games ended in a draw as well. Uh, Karwa, um, Nakamura did have a pretty interesting game against uh, Vishwanathan Anand, uh, although I kind of thought, thought that Vishu would win that, but uh, in the end, again, it was a draw, and uh, I, I didn't have time to show two games. So yeah, uh, that's the game from the first round of the London Chess Classic played in Google headquarters. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, William Avery, John McDonough, and uh, Pina Springer for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Uh, thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon.